How's it going, everyone? This is the George here. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I saw the film earlier this afternoon and got back from seeing it. And these are just my thoughts on the film. Which, in my opinion, was phenomenal. <laughs> like, I'm still blown away by it. I'm still processing the film as I'm, as I'm talking about it. But, yeah, this is definitely an amazing film. And this is a sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is also a phenomenal film. And in this film, Miles Morales is taking on Spot and is once again reunited with Gwen, Peter B. Parker, and meets other variants of, Sp of Spider-Man and learns more about the Spider-Verse. But not only does he have to take on the Spot, he's also got to take on Sp Spider uh, Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man who is voiced by Oscar Isaacs. And we find out why he, he does not like Miles Morales, why he's going after him, because you watch these trailers and you're wondering, oh, why does he have something against Miles? But we find out more about it. And also, this film also explores not just what Miles has been up to, but Gwen Stacy, how she became a Spider-Woman, and what happened in her universe before the events leading up to her going into... Miles' universe and Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So, what's, when it came to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, as I said in my review, I didn't see this film in theaters. I have trust issues when it came to Sony, both with Spider-Man and also with animation, but that film was phenomenal. And this film is also phenomenal, like I said. Uh, the animation is, once again, amazing. It's hard to believe that Sony Animation is making these well-animated movies. But yeah, no, the animation looks great. And one of the things I noticed about this film is that in this film they're going into other universes. And it feels like certain each universe has its own unique animation style. Which I appreciate. It's not just like the same animation style as the universe Miles is in. You see each universe feels dif different, feels unique. So I love that they that they put so much effort into the animation this time around. Uh, another thing is the animation when it came to the character Spot. Now, Spot's was a big surprise in general, but they really gave like a horror vibe when it came to this character. Like the animation and just how he's moving. And yeah, I want to get into Spot before I continue on because I have a I have some things to say about this character. Um, this was the biggest surprise of this film because I, I know who, who Spot is. Is I know he's he's in the comics, but he's also a villain that's not a household name. He's not like not just Green Goblin, Doc Ock, but he's not like Craven, Scorpion, and Mysterio that casual fans will still know if they've watched any of the video game games or television series or played the video game. Sorry, even before like certain characters like Mysterio appeared in films, people still knew who they were because they saw them in a video game or a television series. Spot has not really been in a whole lot of television series. I know he was in the, the 1990s Spider-Man cartoon, but I think it was one episode. So even then, he's not as popular as others. In fact, he was part of this group of minor league Spider-Man villains called the Legion of Losers at one point. But this film, I felt like this film reinvented the character in a similar way that I felt like, well, maybe not similar way, but close to how Batman the Animated Series reinvented Mr. Freeze. Because before Batman the Animated Series, Mr. Freeze was seen as a joke of a character. But then Batman the Animated Series changed his character around. And he went from a corny Batman villain to a villain who who is motivated to try to cure his, his wife. And outside of the horrible Batman and Robin film, Mr. Freeze has been taken a lot more seriously since then. And I think with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, you understand Spot's origin, why he wants to do the things that he does. And at first, you kind of see him as a joke. But as the film progresses, he becomes more serious. And you're understanding why he hates Miles and the lengths he's going to go to make Miles suffer. And the design of the spot, I, I loved his design. And like I said, he gives a, a horror vibe with, with his movement and his animation style. And 
usually when it comes comes to Spider Man movies, not just the live action ones, but across, but into the Spider Verse, we usually get pretty good villains overall. I think we've only gotten a few bad major Spider Man villains, but the Spot is definitely one of the better ones. It's just a big surprise because the Spot isn't exactly a household name. He's always been seen as a minor league Spider Man villain, but yes, this film did justice to the character Spot, and maybe. This will cause maybe changes with this character for other Spider-Man media. Maybe other Spider-Man shows or future games will, you know, think of ways to try to include this character again. But yeah, Spot was excellent. Uh, Miguel O'Hara is voiced by Oscar Isaacs. And and you understand why he, he has something against Miles. And while you don't agree with him, at the same time you can't blame him because you learn more about his backstory in this film. And why he's putting together this team of spider people, essentially. But yeah, I thought he was handled very well. Uh, Gwen Stacy, I loved how we explored more of Gwen's story. Her friendship with her Peter Parker and what happened to him. And her relationship with her dad. One of the highlights of Spider-Man into Spider-Verse and continuing into Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Has always been Miles and his relationship with his family. Particularly his father. And we also see that they're doing something similar with Gwen and her father. And how that relationship plays out. And it's more so at the beginning and end of the film that this that her relationship with her father is explored. But I like how they handled it. I like how they are continuing Miles' story in this film. Uh, don't expect a whole lot of Peter B. Bar Peter B. Parker, by the way. He is in this film, but he's not in it a whole lot. But it's great to see that he does have a daughter, Mayday Parker in this film but this film is mostly the story of miles and gwen stacy and and i love how they handled the these characters and what the things i like about miles and something that i've been noticing more the more times i rewatch Spider-Man to spireverse is that miles is obviously different from other peter parkers other spider women like he ha has his own story to tell and he wants to be different and it's even mentioned in the film like film like it's his story and he will decide how his story goes uh, there's a ton of easter eggs in this film uh, obviously there's references to other versions of spider-man and other spider-man media it's not just references to previous spider-man films there's references to other spider-man shows and video games there's going to be a few surprises in the film uh, other versions of Spy spider-man and that are introduced that were also great additions. You got Spider Punk, you got Spider Man India, great additions to, to this film. I enjoyed those characters a lot. And the the one thing I will say is that by, this film is two hours and sixteen minutes long, which is kind of long for an animated film. But but even when the film ends, because there's going to be part two, Spider Man Beyond the Spider Verse that comes out in March, I didn't want it to end. I want it to continue like i would have gladly sat through another two hours just to see how this film how this saga concludes like that that's how great this film is there was never a dull moment moment it just kept going and going and when it ends ends, you're like it's over and we have to wait less than a year but still it's, it's gonna feel like quite a while until we see the conclusion but yeah, I had a great time with this film. Film, This film really explores Spider-Man. The, the tropes of Spider-Man. Uh, not to... Minor spoiler, but I'm not going to make it major. They highlight something that tends to happen in a lot of Spider-Man comics, movies, shows. They highlight an event that happens. And that's very important important to the story and at first you think is it really that important but it's something that you notice in spider-man media and you realize oh wow that plays a big role in the character development of spider-man and miles is trying to prevent that from happening in his universe and it's a lot more emotional for miles than it is for these other versions versions of spider-man and these are not just like animated films or comic book films. These films are about family, about choosing your own path, what you want your story to be, how can what can you do differently. 
And as far as Spider-Man films go, this is definitely a top three Spider-Man film. I would say I still prefer it to Spider-Verse a little bit more. But I would definitely say this is better than Spider-Man No Way Home. And I still love Spider-Man No Way Home. I think it's a great film. But I would say this is a better story and better film overall. But yeah, the, the returning voice cast, uh, Shameik Moore, Haley Steinfeld, still do a fantastic job. Uh, the, the newcomers like Oscar Isaacs, uh, Daniel Kaluuya do a fantastic job as well. Animation just looks fantastic. Sony has come a long way. And the surprises, the, the Easter eggs, they are, they are worth it. But because the story is so phenomenal, the characters are amazing. The Easter eggs and references are just sprinkles to what's already a delicious cake if you're going to make a food comparison. But overall, I'm going to give Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse an A+. And I'm glad a lot of people are seeing this film. My theater was almost packed. I saw a ton of people entering the theater as I was leaving the theater. And hopefully this film makes a ton of money at the box office because we need great animated movies to make money at the box office. We need more films like Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Now, what are your thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Uh, which film did you prefer more? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? Let me know in the comments down below. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe already. If you haven't, please share this with someone that loves Spider-Man, that's excited for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.